Sources, and we'll be able to fly, just like the greatest American hero. Get out of here! We're not going to be able to fly, but our cars will talk just like a night rider. Man, that would hustle off as cool. Actually, guys, I don't think a lot will change. We won't be flying, our cars won't talk, and people will still live in houses. David Hasselhoff will still be cool, but only in Germany. Yeah, and the Russians will be our friends. <laughs> but you know what? By the end of thousand computers will run our lives, and we'll have mobile telephones that fit in the palm of our hands. Fogel. You're nuts. Like that stuff's ever gonna happen. A prophet always mocked in his own lifetime. <laughs> Hello? Yes, yes. Oh god. I have to go. I'm developing some software at Bill's house and able computers to talk to each other. <laughs> Wait, not Gatesy. He's such a nerd. How can you stand spending time with that guy? He's a genius. One day we're both gonna make a lot of money on computers. Mark my words. Okay guys, let's go. We don't have much time. So, are you going to finally reveal this mystery idea to us? Yep, here it is. We're going to hold a concert at the school. Uh, a concert? Why? To raise money. Our school is always short on cash. So here's my idea. Remember USA for Africa and Live Aid? Yeah, of course. Well, we'll put on a concert like that at our school for our parents. And we'll charge people money to come and see it. Yeah, and we can tell everyone that all the money raised is going towards holding the biggest prom night the city's ever seen. Now you're getting the idea. I love the way Penelope comes together. Take a minute, Billy Mom! Michael, Billy! Hey, girl. Hi, guys. Michael, hurry up and go get changed. We need to start working on our election stuff. Corey and those guys have already done a lot of work. We'd better get started. Yeah, yeah, well, why don't you go to your pad and we'll meet you there in half an hour. Okay, see you then. Huey, go along. Hey, Papa! How's your election campaign going? It, it's okay. Is that it? it? It might be. I'm so sorry, let me help you with that. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. We were done here anyway. <laughs> we were just leaving. We're going. Hey, Papa! I hope you can handle the humiliation of second place tomorrow. God, he's such a jerk! Guys, we have a proposal. Wicked. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, quiet everybody, settle down. Welcome to election day. This is one of the most important days of senior year. Today, the student president will be chosen. Now, we're about to have the proposals from each of the candidates. Michael Feldman has volunteered to go first. 
So, without further ado, um, Michael, are you and your team ready? Yeah? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our, please welcome our next, first candidate, Mr. Michael Feldman. <laughs> Fellow seniors, let me in ears. All the pretty ladies wipe away your tears. Your future prayers has a story to tell, and all those other dweebs can go to hell. Michael! What? Well, let me restate, my fellow candidates. Here's how I'm gonna make Ocean High great. We are the world, USA for Africa. Well, we're gonna make ourselves a replica. We'll put on a show to rock this school. Rock! To raise some money, make our problem like cool. Cool. This show can be the best you've ever seen if you put your vote behind the Feldman team. So form one Q at the front of the line, vote one for Feldman and your lips are mine. At the end of the day, the facts are clear. There's only one reason why you came here. Fergal's a geek, Palmer's a fool, only Michael Feldman can make William Ocean cool. Yeah! <laughs> What a wonderful presentation. You really surprised me. <laughs> Guys, what are we going to do? Michael has stolen our whole election proposal. I don't know. Maybe I should just put it out now. Tell them I no longer want to run. What? You can't do that. You can't think of something. Okay, now to our next candidate, Corey Palmer. Corey, are you ready? Good luck. Um, well... The thing is, we don't really know. It's sort of like, look, if you vote for me, we'll do a really good job, and I guess that's all I have to say. Um, thank you, Corey, for that brief proposal. Um, and now to our third and final candidate. Please welcome Fergal McFerrick. <laughs> hey girls, you saw what Michael did for his presentation. We need to dress this baby up a bit. So back me up and follow whatever I do. Wait, what do you mean? You'll see. Michael's not the only one who can rock this establishment. <laughs> Fellow C, this school has to become technologically advanced. If you vote for me, we will buy hundreds of new computers, printers and state-of-the-art software. We are entering the information age, and we must keep up with it. My friends, I am about to introduce you to the future. Hey, Fergal, what the heck is that? This, my good man, is called a CD. A what? A CD, a compact disc. This baby is going to change the face of music as we know it. Yeah, right. How? CDs will replace records and cassette tapes, which become completely obsolete. But what about all my Millie Vanilli tapes? Will you be able to buy them on CD? Stop wasting your time, Fergal. This is never going to take off. You can't mock me, but I'm telling you, CDs will eradicate cassette tapes exactly the same way microwaves have replaced convention ovens. If we don't keep up with technology, we'll become as obsolete as a humble wireless.
president, Mr. Michael Feldman. So, that was that. Michael won the election by stealing my idea. I never told Tiffany what happened. She would have never have believed me anyway. After the election, I sought solace in Kirk and Elf, but I couldn't help but feel disappointed. I don't know whether it was the election or not, or just the pressures of senior year, but it was about this time that I started having some weird dreams. It's all tied up in the tenth innings. Viola steps up to the plate. There's the pitch, he swings, it connects, it's sailing over the fence. Bueller has won the World Series! Yeah, come on. Woo. Congratulations yeah. to Maggio. Can you guys imagine a world without baseball? Man, that would suck. A world without baseball? What are you talking about? I don't know. Some of the stuff Fergal said on watching day. Just got me thinking. What if stuff we love now is replaced in the future? Alf, what are you going on about? Well, what if there's no such thing as Pac-Man or Space Invaders in a couple of years' time? Don't worry, Al. Cool stuff like that will never be replaced. Yeah, some things are so good that they'll last forever. Oh, like hypercolor t-shirts. And the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Cow bunga, dude. Here Heroes in a half shell. Turtle, turtle power. power. How good are the graphics on the new Atari? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Oh, what about the new colors? They're amazing. Green, blue, red. Whoa. Hey guys, who do you think would have won a lightsaber battle between Yoda and Darth Vader? And Yoda was too old and short. Darth would have killed him in no time. Yeah, but what if Yoda was like really tall and a couple hundred years younger? Man, Darth would have still won. Easy. Yeah, but what if Darth had a cold and was sick and... Hey Al, what if Darth Vader had a lightsaber and shoved it right Jeez, up your... Jeez, will you guys lay off the Star Wars? We must have seen those movies like 20 times each. I'm telling you, they're starting to do weird things in my head. Corey? I don't know. Corey. I keep having these dreams that I'm Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker? <laughs> Luke Skywalker. The force is strong with you. Hey, Corey, use the force. Yeah, well, you geeks caused it. All you two ever talk about is lightsabers and Ewoks. We do not. We talk about lots of other stuff. Hey, Kirk. Yeah, like girls and stuff. Yeah. Like when? Um, hey, it's getting pretty late. I think I hear my mum calling. Yeah. See ya. See ya. See ya. Hey, Corey. Remember one thing. The boss is strong with you. <laughs> the truth was, I only told them half the story. Every night I had the same dream. I dreamt that Tiffany and I were walking through life together, hand in hand. Everything was perfect. I was Luke Skywalker, and she was Princess Leia. <laughs>
After the summer break, a new girl arrived at William Motion High School. Billy Arnold. Present. Lionel Astley. Present. Arth Bueller. 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 It's his day off, sir. It's a brownie <laughs> Okay, everyone. I would like you to welcome a new student to our school. Her name is Eileen. Please make her feel welcome and show her how friendly we are at William Ocean High. Eileen, do you want to say hi? Hi, my name's Eileen and... Um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Good girl. Now, I'm sure you all make an effort to talk to Eileen and that she'll fit in in no time at all. Now, I have one more announcement to make. Mr. Staples has asked me to remind you all that his bonsai classes start today at lunchtime. Anyone that is interested should go to room 2B or not 2B. <laughs> I don't know. Go on, hey, your team quietly. Hi, I'm Corey. And this is Kirk. Welcome to William Motion High. Thanks. Hey, I'm Tiffany. These are my friends Cindy, Mal, and Kim. How do you like our school so far? It's all right, I guess. Hopefully, it'll feel like home soon. Hey. Who do you have in a folder? No one. Supply. I'm allowed to love. I'm so lost without you. <laughs> Cindy Gibson, why? They're a really cool band. Don't worry. They're much nicer when you get to know them better. Jeez, I hope so. Hi, I'm Laura. And I'm Debbie. Welcome to William Ocean High. Hey, do you think Laura and Debbie are weird? You know what? I was riding past Debbie's house one day when I saw her through the window. Kissing a poster of Corey Haim. Her whole room is just covered with posters of Anthony Michael Hall and Don Johnson. And you won't believe this. The Proclaimers. The Proclaimers? God, not her too. Tiffany has a thing for them as well. Can't believe all these girls think that they're cute. They just look like two Scottish geese in glasses to me. <laughs> that poor chick has no idea who she's making friends with. Laura and Debbie are a joke. Neither of them have even had boyfriends. Kirk, we've never had girlfriends. Oh, yeah. But at least we don't make them up. Mr. Cocker? Yes, Corey? Um, well, I was wondering, it's been a while since the elections for school president, and apparently Michael doesn't want to do the concert anymore because he's too busy with the football team. He hasn't told us yet. Not yet. Well, I thought it was a good idea, and I was hoping that you'd let me put on the concert. Great idea, how can we help? Maybe you could just tell everyone about it and help to run rehearsals? Attention everyone, Chorus decided to put on the concert for you all. You should all be very proud. Uh, thanks for keeping that quiet, sir. So, Eileen, do you have a boyfriend? Well, I did, but we had to break up when I came in. He didn't my longest boyfriend yet. We've gone out for two whole weeks. It was majorly serious. Far out, that is serious. So what are the boys like at this school? Have you had many boyfriends? Oh yeah, I've had millions. <laughs> yeah, me too. Who are you dating anyone at the moment? Uh, yeah, totally. His name is Don. He's an actor and he's gorgeous. And I'm dating a guy called Anthony. We're so in love with each other. When will I get to meet them? Probably not for a while. They're both in Miami, on business. Okay then, what are they like?
Yes, girls. You didn't think I would forget our one year anniversary now, did you? Well... No, I'm shocked. It's too late now. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. What can I do to make it up to you? Well, maybe if you give me one little kiss. Oh, really? Maybe. Oh, Stevie, no, not here. What if someone sees us? Come on, loosen up. Why don't you live in the wild side for a change? <laughs> Dangerous, my middle name. <laughs> Mrs. Dawson, you better come quick. Fergal's getting belted up really badly. They're making Miss Mary. Alright, I'll see to this, you go home, get dressed, and I'll pick you up by eight. Okay, it's a deal. No, it's a date. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe it's something in the air. I mean, McCock is getting lucky. You never know your own luck. I don't know whether it was false confidence or a moment of insane madness, but I had finally decided that I had had enough. It was time to let Tiffany know my true feelings for her. Right, well, this is it. Are you sure you want to do this? What if she says no? I don't know, but come on, can't be deemed, right? Right. And she thinks the proclaimers are cute, right? Right. right. Surely I'm better looking than those nerds, right? <laughs> Gee, thanks for the encouragement, guys. Unfortunately, my time could not have been worse. This was the very day that Michael Fellman had decided that in his mind, she belonged to him. Right, guys, how do I look? You have no... You are Michael Fellman, remember? Hey, you want to borrow my white Michael Jackson block? <laughs> no thanks, bro. I'll be fine without it. Yeah, right. Good point, bro. You don't want to appear too smooth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, here goes. Tiffany, Tiffany I, have I have to tell you something. Da 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 da
I thought you said that McLean twins were cute. Yeah, you told me that too. Well, I do. In a long distance kind of way. Would you like it if I got dressed up like Madonna and went walking around the streets? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look, Corey, you're very sweet and you're like a brother to me. But I can't go out with you. I'm really sorry, but Michael is the guy I want to be with. And I just can't see myself ever feeling that way about you. But hey, there are plenty of other fish in the sea. You'll catch yourself one. <laughs> How's it looking? Read it to me. To my dear Eileen. Darling. What? Make it to my darling Eileen. To my darling Eileen. The power of love is a curious thing. Makes one man weep, makes another man sing. Ever since I saw you, I've been walking on sunshine. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. Oh, what a feeling. I'm dancing on the ceiling. I've got my mind set on you, and that'll never tear us apart. You're a craze I've endorsed. You're a powerful force. You used to look good to me, but now I find you simply irresistible. Love your secret admirer. P.S. Every breath you take. Every step you make, I'll be watching. <laughs> yep, that'll do it. Leave it in a locker. Well, we're told to make her feel welcome. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, what, why do they call the space between a girl's breasts and her thighs a waste? I don't know. Why? Because there's room for more breasts. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get out. <laughs> Hello, stud. <laughs> hey, Huey. How come you've been so quiet, man? Ah, uh, I think Cock is going to get me in trouble with my parents. Why? What happened? Nah, don't worry about it. Nah, come on, dude. Spill it, man. Honey, what's that? Nothing, what? <laughs> that behind your back. What? Oh, this? Well, he found me with this magazine. Just a piece of trash in the contest game from Louis Jackson. <gasps> Filth. <laughs> I found in my dad's cupboard. <laughs> You're kidding. No, I'm not. No, it was from like 1975 or something. <laughs> hey, what's the bet? Cock is in his office right now having a burp. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, totally hot scans go check you out, Alex. Oh, quick, everybody laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be silly like that. You guys would ever check me out. What's this? Oh, oh my, my god! god. Uh, honey, it's not what you think. What do you mean this is not you in this magazine? Uh, 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 I was 18! This I is you! No I was 18! I had no money! You're mean! Yes. Every breath you take, every step you make, I'll be watching you. I wonder who it's from? I have no idea. I I'm not nude! Swimsuit. One year we've been together and you never told me. I tried to, but I was too embarrassed. I don't care, you never told me, you lied to me. I never lied to you, please, it's not that big a deal. Oh really? Look at this staple! This is so great! They were all the 
boyfriends! You know, I don't want to see you tonight. I need time to think. Oh, Stevie! Ladies and gentlemen, we live in an era of change. Here in the United States, we have luxuries that some countries in the world can only dream about. Things like television, computers, and the movies. But there are some countries that can't even afford food for their children. That's right, there are countries in Africa, like Ethiopia, that are at the point of total salvation. I'm sure you all remember Bob Geldof organized a concert called Band Aid in London to help raise money for these countries in the sport. And USA for Africa, which were held here at home. <laughs> well, Corey Palmer suggested that this school stage a concert of its own to raise money for these countries. <coughs> Mr. Cocker and I think it is a wonderful idea, and so rehearsals will start tomorrow, and we'd like you all to be involved. So what does everyone think about that? No. Yeah! Come on, people, you're not just citizens of the United States of America, you're citizens of the world. I'm gonna make a change for once in my life. It's gonna feel real good, gonna make a difference, gonna make Yeah. 
So that is the end of our first act. Now we have 15 minute intermission.